JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook uh, webinar for the week December the 13th until December the 17th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But uh, before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce doesn't constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, Monday appears to be a relatively light day with no major events on or indicators on the agenda. On Tuesday, the only releases worth mentioning are the UK Employment Report for October and the US PPIs for November. The unemployment rate in the UK is expected to have ticked down to 4.2% from 4.3%, but the employment change is forecast to show that the economy has gained less jobs in the three months to October than it did in the three months to September. Average weekly earnings, both including and excluding bonuses, are forecast to have slowed, which could mean that uh, UK inflation could top as well in, excuse me, in the months to come. In any case, we don't expect uh, pound traders to pay much attention to this release, as they may prefer to avoid committing to large positions ahead of Thursday's Bank of England decision. Now, as for the US data, similarly to the CPIs, both the headline and core PPI rates are expected to have, drift further, to have drift further north. Now, on Wednesday, the calendar gets heavier with the main event on the agenda being the FOMC interest rate decision. A couple of weeks ago, Fed Chair Jerome Powell appeared hoggish before the US Congress, surprising those expecting him to adopt a more cautious stance due to the new coronavirus variant and the restrictive measures adopted around the globe. In contrast, the Fed chief said that the transitory wording with regards to inflation may have to be dropped out of the Fed's monetary policy statement and that, and that uh, quantitative easing tapering should end sooner than previously estimated. Now, despite non-farm payrolls for November missing expectations, the unemployment rate declined even more to 4.2% from 4.6%, which combined with further acceleration in the CPIs on Friday, suggests that indeed the Fed could appear more hoggish uh, this time around. That said, removing the transitory wording and announcing a faster tapering pace is what the financial community may have been already anticipating. Therefore, such decisions by themselves are unlikely to result in high market volatility. Thus, we expect investors to pay extra attention to the updated economic projections and the new dot plot. If officials are also in favor of faster rate hikes as well, then uh, the US dollar could keep drifting north, but how equities will react is uh, not straightforward. With our market participants turning somewhat skeptical again with regards to the future performance of uh, the global economy, stocks could be sold on speculation that high borrowing costs uh, sooner could hurt companies' profitability. However, because they may have digested the idea, may, they may have digested this idea to, the, to some extent, we don't expect a large and extended fall. Now, as of Wednesday's data releases, during the Asian morning, we have China's uh, fixed asset investment, industrial production, and retail sales or for all for November, while during the early European session, the UK CPIs are forecast to have accelerated further. That said, we don't believe that uh, they will prove uh, a game changer with regards to Thursday's Bank of England decision, as the main focus recently has been the increasing COVID cases and the new restrictive measures. Later in the day, but still ahead of the FOMC decision, we get the US retail sales for November and the Canadian CPIs for the month. Both headline and core sales are forecast to have slowed, while Canada's headline CPI rate is forecast to have held steady at 4.7% uh, year over year. No forecast is available for the core rate. Now, on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the SNB, the Bank of England, 
and the ECB. Getting the ball rolling with the SNB, uh, meetings of uh, this bank have been passing unnoticed uh, for several months uh, now. However, things may be different this time around as concerns how the new COVID-related restrictions can affect European growth have pushed Euro, uh, Euro franc lower near the 104 um, four zone. Now, with SNB officials maintaining the view that the franc remains highly valued, even when Euro Swiss was at higher levels, we see decent chances for them to strengthen their wording about intervening in the FX market to prevent the pair from uh, moving lower. Now, passing the ball to the Bank of England, we believe that all the attention will fall on interest rates. Following the outbreak of the new COVID variant and the new restrictions in the UK, market participants have pushed drastically back their expectations with regards to a rate hike at uh, this gathering. The latest available data of, uh, the UK, of the UK overnight index swaps suggests that a hike to 0.25% is fully priced in for May 2022. We don't believe that policymakers will surprise the financial community by hiking this week, and therefore it, it will be interesting to see what they have to say for uh, their future for uh, their future uh, course uh, of action. Hints uh, that uh, they could lift rates sooner than when the market uh, pricing suggests could result in a rebound in the British pound. The opposite could be true in case they sound more uh, more hesitant. Now, a few minutes after uh, the Bank of England, we have the ECB. No monetary policy action is expected by this bank, but it would be interesting to see what they are planning to do moving forward in the midst of uh, fresh lockdowns, but also accelerating uh, inflation in the euro area. Officials are expected to announce that uh, the pandemic emerges, emergency purchase program will end in March. So it will be interesting to see whether they are willing to compensate through other schemes like the asset purchase program. Something like that combined with more warnings that interest rates are unlikely to start rising anytime soon could result in another round of selling in the euro. Now, besides uh, those three central banks, we also have several top tier data releases on the agenda, like the New, Zealand GDP, the New Zealand GDP for the third quarter and Australia's employment report for November. Later in the day, we get the preliminary manufacturing and services PMIs uh, for, uh, for, for, for uh, excuse me, we get the preliminary manufacturing and services PMIs uh, for, uh, Dece for December from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. The US industrial production uh, for November is also due to be released. Now, finally, on Friday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Japan with uh, Japanese inflation near zero, well below the bank's target of uh, 2%. We don't expect any material changes, neither to the actual policy measures, nor to the, langu nor to the language uh, in the accompanying statement. Once again, the yen may not react to the outcome and stay driven by developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next, um, uh, next, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, we will not have uh, a weekly market outlook uh, next Monday, but we will do have one uh, the, on, the 20, on the 27th of, um, of the month. So see you. Uh, those who are uh, who participate in the weekly Outlook webinar, see you then. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, though, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 9 a.m. GMT. I uh, will be holding uh, those videos uh, tomorrow and for the rest of uh, this week. So goodbye, have a nice day and a greater week. JFT, just fair and direct.